how do you find a an ethical facilitator or shaman? Because even some of the places that are down in South America are kind of getting busted right now for like exploitation where the shaman kind of crossed some boundaries. Um, and I, I don't know if some of them are like obviously tourist traps and you should kind of like look at the writing on the walls, but how do you differentiate between someone who's like a, a positive but at the same time like neutral safe space versus someone that may be coming in with their own ego or agenda and um, even greed with this because you know there's a lot of money to be had in the space it's so hard and it's it, it's again I th- these are things I did not think about five years ago but mm-hmm. it's so frustrating that we can't have a reasonable discussion on drug policy in this country and therefore we can't have an open market where there are very public ratings and very public scores and very public discussions about mm-hmm. either, regard, either the person or the or the drug itself. It's um, it's super frustrating. So what you so your options in America are you can do something legal like mm-hmm. ketamine, and mm-hmm. then you can pick a ketamine practice and we can um, that has ratings and, and reputation. Um, you can do something legal in other countries, and you can fly down to Central or South America. You can go to the Netherlands, Bahamas, Jamaica. Um, and do something that way, or you can go underground. It, I'd like to say it's radically different choosing a legal ketamine experience than it is choosing a um, an underground psilocybin, but it's not. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'll give just one example. Legal ketamine is controlled by a couple of different groups. So you have the anesthesiologists who say, we're the only ones really trained and who work in, in ketamine all the time, and we're the ones who should control this. And then you have the psychiatrists like, well, we're the ones who are both into mental health and prescription, and we're doctors, and we should control this. And then you have the therapists who are like, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. This is actually therapy, and this is our area of expertise, and and it's not that hard to, to prescribe this. Um, and then you have... The un- unlicensed guides who are saying, well, wait a minute, we've been practicing with psychedelic medicine for a long time. We have the most experience guiding people in these these uh, non-ordinary states of consciousness. We really should be the ones that control this. They all have things that are right. In my opinion, though, if you go to, to a traditional ketamine clinic run by an anesthesiologist where they hook you up to an IV and they come back an hour later and send you home, that research shows that that is not as successful as if you combine it with any type of therapy, licensed or unlicensed. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you don't know that if you don't know to ask. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you do? You have to ask. You have to ask those kinds of questions. Are you going to give me any type of preparation and integration support? Mm-hmm. Um, what is the experience itself going to be like? You were talking about ritual before. Mm-hmm. What are their philosophies on ritual? And whether you you believe in any God specifically doesn't matter, but mm-hmm. having a ceremony wrapped around this leads to better outcomes is what the research says. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for those choosing underground or choosing Central or South America, again, the same, just ask the questions. How many people are going to be in my ceremony with me? There's a very um, well-known facility in Costa Rica that has 80 to 100 people at a time doing wow. ayahuasca. That seems kind of dangerous. How do you keep an eye on everyone? It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another, there's a number of them that are 40. Again, seems like a lot, but I can see that. And then most of the ones I participated in are 15 to 20, which seems to be a sweet spot. Um, yeah, that seems a lot more reasonable. A lot more reasonable. Mm-hmm. But asking those questions, don't be afraid to ask the questions. What is mm-hmm. the experience of the guide? What do you have um, on staff in terms, uh, in case anything does go awry? Um, what is your what, what is the ceremonial components? What are the ceremonial components? What do you have for preparation? What do you have for integration? Ask all those questions, and if you don't like the answers, go find someplace else. Mm-hmm. No, that's good advice. Definitely don't just pick someplace and hope for the best. Do a little bit of effort before you do something that's so vulnerable. Yeah, I was lucky. I mean, I was lucky that my friends had done some research mm-hmm. <clears throat> and invited me in. But mm-hmm. in retrospect, I should have been asking all of those questions, and I didn't. I mm-hmm. just went with the flow, which which so much of us do at different points in our life. And mm-hmm. yeah, just kind of it served you. It, it served like... me. It worked out. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was one of those life nudges that got me to the right place. But uh, yeah, it certainly could have had a different different twist to it. So, what's your opinion on those um, those ketamine centers that you now not centers that are c- c- on your app? So, mm-hmm. like they just deliver it to you pretty much like you do a 10 minute phone call and then you get ketamine to your door so technically it's legal but that's where I get a little bit apprehensive of like the vast just like legalization of everything because I don't know that out of context that's going to be more helpful than hurtful so again full disclosure I have a um I have launching a telehealth company in Florida that Mm -hmm. will connect people to ketamine so I am clearly biased on this but let me let me I'll tell you how I think about this okay um, I don't love the idea of people just hopping online, 
going to a prescriber and five minutes later they've been prescribed ketamine. It's on the way to them. I think that is a, uh, I think it's a bit reckless. Okay. Um, it's a very powerful medicine. Um, it's a short, it's only about an hour versus psilocybin, which we're talking about six, mm-hmm. um, six to eight. Um, but it's super powerful. It can mm-hmm. take you very deep. It's also one of the only medicines that has any addiction uh, or addictive profile. In animal tests, they're, the animals sometimes will pick ketamine over food. They won't do oh, that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's one of the few. Um, okay. They won't do that with psilocybin or LSD, mm-hmm. but yes, with ketamine. So um, recreationally, there are people who get addicted to ketamine. Um, nobody's jonesing for their next mushroom fix. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> but medicinally or in clinical use, you don't really have that issue with ketamine. So if you're listening to this, like, oh, I want to try it, then you're at a party and someone says, oh, well, here's ketamine. That's that's not the right place to 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 go with the ketamine. Um, with uh, I think the companies that are doing it better than others. So I think telehealth is is super important because it brings down the cost. All of us in telehealth land are about twelve hundred dollars for six sessions. If you go to a ketamine clinic, you're forty five hundred to six thousand dollars for six sessions. Whoa. It's that big of a difference. Mm-hmm. But there has to be compromise. So. Uh, what are the changes? So one thing is when you in, when you do your intake, whoever you go with, they should do a full medical intake. They should do a depression screen. They should do an anxiety screen. You should have a a video call that's that's significant with a medical prescriber, whatever's licensed in your state, where they go over the answers to your questions. They talk to you about depression, anxiety. They talk about what your intention is, and then they decide whether you're a good fit for ketamine or not. Um, the ones that I think do it best send you one dose to start, mm-hmm. maybe two. To see how you react, and they start you low, mm-hmm. and uh, and then see again because people react wildly different to ketamine. Right. So start you low, and then I think the ones that do it best have some type of guide program where they're going to assign you somebody who's going to help prepare you. Let's talk about your intentions. Let's make sure you write this down. What are you trying to get out of this? They don't need to give their opinion. They just need to help draw it out of you. They're mm-hmm. going to help make sure you are crystal clear. You're going to what you're going to do during the session. This is how long it's going to be. And then they're going to meet you on the other side of at least the first couple sessions. What came up? Again, they don't have, it's not therapy where they have to give you, well, did you think about this? Or what about your father? And <laughs> No, just what came up? How did it make you feel? Where did you feel it in your body? How did you react? Did you have a release? What does it make you think about? How does it, what did it feel like to have the weight of the world lifted off your shoulder? What did you think you were carrying when you had that experience? And how are you going to now um, take that learning into your life so mm-hmm. I, I guess in psychedelics as a whole i'd like to think of them not as a cure it's a catalyst it's just a glimpse of insight that then you can move on and but you have to do that work yourself mm-hmm. no that makes a lot of sense so again it's just kind of having your eyes open when you're picking the provider and not just going with it so hopefully you know it's a little bit more responsibly done yeah, and, and you can you can be picky. They're all mm-hmm. about the same price. So mm-hmm. it's really what are you looking for? And if all of the, if you're if you're listening to something like this and you're reading the books, and it's like I really want to have a as close to us. I want to have a psychedelic experience, but I'm not willing to do something illegal. So I want to do ketamine. Mm-hmm. Well, think what are the things in those psychedelic experiences that were attractive to you? And find a provider that offers the that type of wrapper around the ketamine. Mm-hmm. And they're out there. Mm-hmm. No, that's really good advice. <laughs> 